we go. Welcome in a post memorial. That's all I want to talk about. No, no, we have the RBC Canadian Open returning. We have the U.S. Open around the corner, so we do have to move forward. Welcome in putting for dough. You know the drill. We only ask two quick things, and we're going to give you some free money to work with from FanDuel coming up. That's Ben Rasa. I'm Aton Jordan is producing. Hit the thumbs up. That's number one. And two is subscribe here to the Odds Shopper channel as we have a ton of content throughout the clock running, including, and not only, Ben Ross's sharp play, sharp bet, sharp pick of the day. What's happening, man? What's going on? Yeah, we had uh, some exciting golf. Some good, some bad, some ugly. We'll get into that with the Memorial. And, and as you mentioned, it's a nice, the next month, month and a half for the PGA Tour is just absolutely fantastic. You've got majors, you've got big time events in between them. The Canadian Open is one of them. I think this is a pretty yep. strong field. We get a new course to talk about, one that we haven't seen in recent years. So I'm, I'm very excited to dive into this. Well, we have to look back and we can't bury the lead here. Somebody on this show gave out a 65 to one long shot last week. And let me just be completely 100,000 million percent transparent. I chickened out. I just took Horschel top 20, top 40. I did not take him outright. So shame on me, but credit the others out there who did and actually had him hit it. Uh, yeah, I wasn't one of them. I, I, <laughs> I'm sure I have to look at the clip. I'm sure that I scoffed at your you mentioning. Yeah. Because I would never take Billy Horschel at that course. That didn't make any sense. And now he's holding the trophy. Shame on me. We'll get right into it. it it's certain, definitely not one of my better golf weeks. But the frustrating thing, it just shows how a couple of things different can change it all. I had Wise and Neiman on my outright card. Yep. And they were not close to catching him. But at the same time, they were right there. And it's just amazing that if one of them was managed to, to take this tournament down, it would have changed my entire week because not sticking with Denny McCarthy in my 40 20 10 was frustrating. Uh, but man, credit to you, Billy Ho, that's a good one. And, and there were some other, you know, little things. Ricky kind of melted, CT Pan was kind of in, in, in and out. He made a 10 on a hole. So it, the memorial gave us a little bit of everything last week. All right. So let me just rehash something that you mentioned on your end, because I played this. And again, we had a couple of people on Twitter respond to the show, say, hey, thanks. You know, I played Horschel yep. a couple of different ways. So we give out outrights. We also talk a little bit about how you can shade and add a top 10, top 20, what have you. When you gave out wise and it's on the clip from last week, I tailed wise top 20. Great payout. Tailed Neiman played him top 20. Great payout. We talked about Max Homa. I gave him out as an outright, and he was in that similar spot on Sunday. But the top 20, he was like 175 for top 20. You continue to have to hit that. So I get what you're saying. And, and look, it's on a week in which one of us did hit an outright. But I don't want you to feel like it wasn't a good week for you in the sense that you didn't hit Wise or Neiman outright. I think overall, if people attack the board with what we collectively gave out, they made a shitload of money last week, man. Yeah, I mean, I was partly alluding to my DFS lineups, which were <laughs> as disturbed. Ma Matthew Fitzpatrick lost seven and a half strokes putting that uh, in two days, which is there's nothing you can do about that. That's just uh, a ridiculous outlier. But no, I mean, there's no doubt the top 20s and things of that nature are bankroll boosters. But it was it was pretty close to potentially having a really good out right there. Billy Ho to you. Very, very good. And, you know, we. It's a very interesting stretch of golf because we've got some big yeah. names that are sticking around to play in this event and then the U.S. Open right right on tap. So it's going to be interesting to see again, will it be one of the elites? Will it be one of the mid-ranges? You you cash, you know, 65 to 1 is certainly not one of the elites. What will we get this week in, in Canada? So before we tell everybody about this bankroll and what they can really just start betting right away with free money at FanDuel, I have a proposition, okay? Okay. Victor Hovland and Ricky Fowler are no longer welcome on this program. Well, Ricky's going to live, so that helps. He's been eliminated from the PGA Tour. Thank you. He so, can follow Kevin Na and others. Yeah, but... he's gone. Uh, Hovland, mercifully, I'm, I'm is not I'm in this out. field. I so. am out on Victor Hovland, Ben Rasa. Okay, you can play him as much as you want. I Here's the deal. I will no longer even acknowledge Victor Hovland's existence but I won't fight back if you do. Is that fair? That's fair. I, I can live with that. I have a couple guys like that. I, I will never recommend them, but I won't shame it uh, when the audience does. 
right, here, here's something new. And this is for everybody out there who has yet to sign up at FanDuel. So if you're a new customer, we want you to have some free money. And it's so simple, right? Because what you're going to do is sign up as a new customer, FanDuel, deposit at least $10. And it has to be done on the app. So we want you to just reiterate this again. We want you to download the app, sign up on the app, and then deposit at least $10. That link's in the video below. You can click right there. It'll bring you right there. You download the app. You'll be good to go. Deposit $10, and then you bet $5 just to win, right, on anything to win. Win or lose that bet, you're going to get $200 at FanDuel. So think of this. You're going to get on FanDuel, download the app. You're going to be good to go. Sign up, deposit at least $10, place a $5 bet. Win or lose, you're going to win $200. That's free money last I checked, Rasa. Yeah, win or lose your bet, you're getting the $200 in free bets. Super simple free process. Bets, thank you. Yeah, it's just a no-brainer offer. Again, the books are doing this because they want your business, but they're giving you money, and that money can be used for a lot of things. So very simple process. Use that link. If you haven't been over there, uh, I, I play on FanDuel. I bet on FanDuel. I actually very really like that. It's one of my favorite books out there, uh, and I'm happy that they're giving people a chance to get in the door with 200 free dollars. Absolutely. And uh, you know, because I'm sending you screenshot after screenshot yes. at like 4.30 in the morning. You, FanDuel you also is, is a, there. Yeah. It's a crowd favorite over here as well. And look, they just have a lot of cool different stuff that you can have fun and take advantage of. So $200 of free bets right away for just playing a $5 wager is, as Ben said, a no-brainer. So we'll look at the field here at the top of the board at the RBC, but also like to kind of merge the two together, right? The course itself, you mentioned St. George's here. It's going to be an easy spot. We even have an extra par three jammed in this course here. The par five should be very manageable. The one thing I would say to look out for, Ben Rasa, is if you miss your approach shot, including par threes, this green that you face, no matter what hole you're on, is going to be riddled with trouble surrounding it. So you really have to be more accurate than I think other places, despite it being overall an easy course. Yeah, so we haven't seen this course uh, in years past, so we're going to try to have to infer it's a par 70, it's short, it's tree-lined, kind of speaks to like heritage to me, you know, another RBC course. Mm. Uh, yep. that we see down in Hilton Head. So th there's some characteristics, but it's a second shot course. You need to be accurate. Uh, can you be aggressive? Sure, you have three par th fives to still work with because of the extra par three. So I get it. I, I think this is a pretty fair all-around test. I expect it to be pretty easy. Around the green will come in handy, though. So uh, sometimes I talk about skill sets, like you need to be a dominant driver. You need to be a crazy scrambler. I don't really see that here. I think you can just be a pretty all-around play player, and you'll be just fine. I think where we may differ is your point about scrambling only because we know how difficult this game is, even on a par 70, your ability to get out of trouble, your ability to just deal with shit. And that shit can come in sand, that can come in hazard, that can come in a third cut. So I think that might be, and again, even if it's like a one to 3% edge in my head, that may be something that I wait a little bit more. But ultimately, you're right. Like, you have to be a really well-rounded player here, and I don't think anything else, even putting, jumps out as, like, a major edge. Yeah, again, I, I think that there will be some small things that are yet to be determined with this course, but yep. the way I look at it, you're going to be able to be aggressive if you want to. If you want to lay back, you're going to have some longer irons, but you'll be just fine. Timely scrambling, but nothing crazy like Memorial, where around the green we saw some guys just get eaten alive. I like it. And, you know, and then we have the unknown of the U.S. Open is lurking. Our guys, do they have one eye on uh, the major coming up? Are they focused? That's that's an unknown that you can't really get into play the what if game. But to me, this is just a, a pretty easy evaluation in the sense that I don't bump anything up major. I'm just looking for guys playing good that I, I think can translate at this track. All right, brother, let's get it. And you begin. Every place we go, including our 40, 20, 10. And there's a name you mentioned that's going to make a, a recurrence here. And it ain't going to be Ricky Fowler. No. I promise you that. So let's look at your top guys that you're aiming for. So the board is interesting. Rarely, um, I, I, normally, we don't see multiple guys inside of 10 to 1 on the PGA yeah. Tour. That's just not Good something point. we're accustomed to. And we've got, depending where you're looking, three with Scheffler, JT, and Rory. I'm not going to go to them. Of course, they're the favorites. There's no doubt. 
Oh, man, this is a tough one to go right off the bat. But I'm going to stick with Matthew Fitzpatrick. I know that's a very frustrating guy, and he has not won on the PGA Tour. He's 18-1, to 1, though. I don't read in anything. If you look at his tee to green numbers, second at Wells Fargo, 5.9 strokes gained tee to green. Fifth at the PGA Championship, 7.3 strokes tee to green. At the Memorial, 6.5 strokes tee to green. The difference, it's a big miscut, and that's because he lost seven and a half strokes putting. That's just an outlier. That's never going to happen again. Honestly, that, that's his worst putting performance ever on the PGA Tour. I throw that out. I love this course for him. This is a yeah. guy who's been adamant that he loves Hilton Head. He loves Heritage. It, has, it hasn't translated always there, but this is the perfect type of venue. We have seen him. He's got a top five at Heritage. He's got a sixth place at Pebble. Valspar, top five. Matthew Fitzpatrick on a big bounce back. Winning could be a stretch, but I'm, I'm okay around 20 to 1, 18 to 1. I have him on the card. So there's a correlation between Fitzy and, and my top guy, but I want you to get your second guy out first, and then we can kind of come back to it when I hit my number one guy. Because I love where you're going, and the key phrase that I'm going to continue to pound throughout, especially at the top for me, is going to be course comparison because of the freshness here at St. George's. But you have another one to look at, too. And so I actually like him this time. Okay. We, yeah. We've kind of disagreed a little bit on the next guy. <laughs> this speaks to, for, for my card, of how variant you can go. Tony Finau is also on my card. And you look at him yeah. and Fitzy. There's not a ton of overlap, obviously. Tony Finau is not even close to the putter. Uh, but he can be a more aggressive driver. And he's someone that's playing good golf as well. He's made six straight cuts. He's coming off a fourth-place finish at Charles Schwab, where I thought he really had a chance there. He was runner-up in Mexico. He's shown that the ability to club down at times can be very useful to him. I don't mind this course. 20, you know, again, if you get past the big three, and that's a big if, all these numbers are going to look really, really appealing. If you can survive Scheffler and Rory and JT, these guys like Fitzy and Tony, uh, they're going to be good prices and good numbers. So I, I definitely agree with the sentiment. And you mentioned the, the two strong finishes over his last four starts, making cuts as well. It's just, it's really hard to ignore somebody like Tony Finau when he's playing this well, Be especially if you wanted to look at comfort, course, and the possibility, depending on when he's teeing off and talking about conditions, you always mention that up. Doesn't even need to be first round leader, but this guy has a 59-61 in his bag. It's just a matter of, can he put it together? And when he's playing this consistent, I, I love that play. I think people, I'm going to, and I think others should definitely work a way to tail that, not just outright with Finau. He's, he's going to be around. So I don't love the number compared to Finau, and I would like it closer to 2,400 overall. But let me just start with an obvious play. And I think he's an obvious chalk if you remove the top three guys because he's really the country's best chance at being the hometown leader here in Corey Connors. So I, I think Connors is worth a shot. I'm going to put a sprinkle on him, the familiarity with this place, the hometown sense of it. I know it didn't work. We talked about in Mexico with answer, et cetera, but I like Connors here. He's not playing awful by any means. So he would be somebody I throw out. And then I want to get to Sam Burns, not only to win this, but also as a top 10 play, because much like what you laid out initially, Ben Rasa with Fitzy, We've seen Burns win multiple times already on courses in which he's played well on a comparison course elsewhere. And I think that draws significantly in Burns' favor, much like Fitzpatrick, as you referenced. But Burns is another guy that I think I can lean on. So I'm going to take him to win in top 10 as well up at the top. So Corey Connor is going to be a popular name this week. I totally see it on the DFS and betting front. He had not been striking it well. He lost two straight on the approach. At the Memorial, he gained 8.1 strokes on the approach that led the field. Just dominant. Couldn't putt at all. But that's He's stat here, though. Oh, it's huge. I mean, that translate. If you're putting it close, you don't need to putt good because it's close. <laughs> if your drives can be bad if you can recover it. That is the kind of the, the trump card. The, that fixes everything if you can strike it yep. like that. We, we see that time and time again from Corey Connors. And then Sam Burns I said the same thing for a – not a long time, but in recent memories, Sam Burns is a prolific winner, but I, I really only like to target him on Bermuda. Well, he goes out and wins at Colonial on Bentgrass, and he is showing that it doesn't matter where this guy tees it up. He's a serious threat time and time again. So Sam Burns, unlike Matthew Fitzpatrick, has cashed in on his opportunities. Consistency-wise, I would still go with Fitzy, but Sam Burns is winning tournaments on the PGA Tour, so 
I'm not going to push back on either of your guys. Uh, I think that's a fine one-two punch if you want to go to that next tier. All right. So we always tell people about getting them to the next tier of cashing tickets. So let's take a step back. Remind people that link is below here about our premium betting discord where Ben Rasa is giving out college baseball plays right now today, June 6th, as we're doing this show. So you never know what you're going to get. Alex Baker, Steve Buzzard, the three of these guys are top sharps, giving out great top ROI plays. So we want you to be a part of that. Sign up below through that link and start putting this free money at FanDuel to work. It's not just here, but it's across. you're going to get an alert. I get these alerts like Sunday. I'm doing an MLB show, and I get an alert from Alex Baker about take some K-props. So I get to bounce them off, you know, Linkwist, wherever I'm hosting the show with. And next thing you know, I sound smart. It's great. Yeah, college bit. Don't get used to that. Uh, that's a public <laughs> service announcement. No. Oh, well, action never hurt anyone. There's some good soccer games today, too. But no, you know what? You've got the tools. You find the edges. You see some lines that are maybe a little stale, maybe, uh, you know, against Pinnacle that aren't as good. Boom. We, we put some value. We alert the, the Discord. It's been a, a great community and a ton of fun. So if you're looking to get in, not every day, you know, we don't force it. We're not giving you 30 plays that have just action. We got <laughs> right. plenty of people in there dropping plays. We try to find those ones with great value. Uh, and then occasionally a little, little action with the old college baseball. It's amazing, man. I, I never know Carolina. what I'm going to get from you. I, I think do I do. I. Just, just when I figure, I think I have you figured out. Here comes Ricky Fowler to win something. So no. I, let's move never on. I, I love the fact that he's out, by the way, and we never have to reference him again. So let's move to the mid-range. You start. I really only have one name that I'm going to counter or really back and, and throw just to kind of see what you think. But as always, my friend, you start, and let's look at more of that mid-range to where there's going to be some value, not only playing a guy, I imagine, outright, but if you do like him in maybe that top 10, top 20 range. Yeah. So again, this is the importance of shopping around with some of these guys. Cause I didn't really love the mid range. Harold Varner is a guy that th this odds up, you know, we're, we're doing this show uh, on a Monday afternoon. His odds are really dropping. He was 42 to one. He's down to 33 to one uh, at FanDuel. Some of the other numbers may be slow to react. I, I still like him in that, but obviously I prefer the 42 to one. And this is a guy, you know, I, I think at least I remember you're looking and say, oh, I came in 27th at Charles Schwab. Yeah, that's true, but it, that doesn't tell the story. He was in the hunt, and then he went triple, double, triple with a four putt, and he completely took himself out of the tournament, shot 78 on Sunday. He was a lot closer than maybe uh, the box score indicates. So I think that Varner at a track like this, again, I'm going to keep saying heritage uh, during this video. This is another guy, boom, third at Heritage and runner-up at Heritage in the last two years. I think that translates. He is a guy that I think a lot of people are going to look to this week. Look, uh, it's going to be almost a broken record for me, but with everything we see, I mean, this is a place that is riddled with green side bunkers. I mean, it's ridiculous how much that if you make a mistake, you're going to be penalized or just have to get out of it, a pain in the ass to get out of it. Harold Varner III enters as a top 10 guy across the board in this field as just strokes gained approach. So that's a metric that HB3 now sits nice and comfortable that should aid him. And on top of that, you reference he's playing well. So I think this is another one. I love it, man. And I think you can attack him from a couple of different angles here, by all means. I just want to throw one name in this similar range at you, more so of what does Ben think than I'm all over it. Because I do think there's some value for a guy like Sebastian Munoz who comes in and does everything well. Not exceptionally well. I mean, maybe more of like what we see from a Sung J M when he's playing really well. This is a course that I think can fit Munoz. He's at 3,400 on FanDuel. So I, I don't know if he's out of whack as far as his pricing is concerned. But he's definitely somebody that is in that mid-range, that maybe top-end mid-range that kind of popped out for me. Munoz is always a tough evaluation just because you've kind of alluded to it. He at times gets crazy hot with the putter. He's a pretty good ball striker. He's not a bad scrambler, but he's not an elite anything, uh, in my opinion. He kind of just at yep. times is very solid. And I think we see that translate into a lot of made cuts. He's made nine straight cuts, but he only has one finish inside the top 20 over those starts. 
So there's a push and pull there. I do like that at times we've seen him first round leader style get really, really hot. It's not sustained for 72 holes. It's going to be a price thing for me. I mean, when, when you're looking at the odds with a guy like Munoz, he's falling in that second tier, but he's been bet down as well uh, into the mid thirties. So I get it. I think I would rather go with Varner if I had to choose between the two at the same price. I think HV3 might be a little closer. All right, let's move. This is now we're one for one over the last two weeks. So you have to pick it up here because I ain't going to hit my guys. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> let's I'll, go. I'll get right Long on shot. That. Who you got? I mention this guy every week. And although he has not won any tournaments recently, CT Pan is a name that I think we just have to continue to buy on in some form or oh, fashion. Yeah. He came in 53rd at the Memorial and that's not good. But when you make a 10, not on the weekend, and you still make the cut, that's impressive in itself. He made a 10. I, I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, C.T. Pan is playing good, good golf. He had some real trouble off the tee at Memorial. What he's going to see at St. George compared to what he sees at Muirfield Village is not comparable, uh, particularly off the tee. I think he'll be able to lay off, club down, lean on the approaches. If he gets hot with the putter and shocker, C.T. Pan has one tour victory. And where was that? RBC Heritage. And that That's is right. obviously the theme of my show. He's 60 to one right now. You could probably even find better out there. I like CT Pan. Uh, I think he belongs on the card this week. I have so much CT Pan information because he's my 40, 20, 10 guy. I'm not even going to bury the lead there. Yeah. And I got him top 40 at even money. You're right. I mean, this guy, short course specialist, and I'm seeing it here, seven of his 12 top 10 courses under 7,200 yards. How about this? He's gained, as bad as he was, as you referenced there, Memorial, he's gained in strokes, gained approach in nine straight events. Nine That's, straight yeah. events he's gained. In, as, and look, this is something that we should just pen him down for, which is being able to hit his irons consec uh, consistently on a course like this. No, I, I love him. I mean, he's going to come back here for me before we get out of here, but... Anything you can get for Pan, and I know that you were looking at him 60 to 1. That, that's fantastic. So sign me up. I'm already playing him multiple ways. This is this week's Ricky Fowler last week. Hopefully, we'll just have a better result when both of us are on a guy like that. That's all. TD Pan is yeah, – the thing I like about <laughs> him, he kind of knows his game. He's not going to do anything stupid. Yeah. He just plays how he plays some courses – they're not going to ever be good for him. But when he's at a course that he's comfortable at, and I think this will be one of them, CT Pan can play with the best of them. So I like that. Just to wrap up real quick, you know, I looked at some names way down that, you know, I think that some of the Europeans like Schwab, who's not playing good, Patrick Rogers, who's of course not a European, but he's been kind of there. You're going to see 100 to 150 to one, depending on the books that you're looking at. You know, I didn't see anything below that, I'll be honest. Maybe something will pop up later in the week. But when I look at my card, I'm more focused on how can I allocate uh, my top 20s, my top 10s, obviously even my outrights to these guys that I think have have more of a shot than the lotto tickets. When you look at like Rye and Schwab, uh, Steven Yeager, those types, that's that's a sprinkle at best for me. Absolutely. And, and I understand. And it's interesting because this week, as easy of a course as it is, it's top heavy with the field, which may make it a little difficult to, to kind of pull out somebody on that long end. So this is as long as I think we can get right now as far as some shots here. And I'm definitely going to play these guys top 10. But you can start with Luke Donald, who just pops up from a metric standpoint as somebody who fits this course, as somebody who has been playing the style, at least, that you can apply here. I mean, you're talking north of 250 or so, depending on where this is shifted when you're watching this, for a guy that, again, on a longer course or on a, on a bomb-free course may not be as big of a fit here, but that's a super long shot that I think you can start to reason. And then if you want to go back to the Munoz conversation about somebody who just pops up that is a major long shot, but from a metric standpoint, if you're running your models, what have you, he pops up as somebody who can do things well to really well, just not exceptional. It's Tyler Duncan. How about that? Tyler Dunks. Duncan, buck 80 to one. And I'm going to double down and say top five for Tyler Duncan. We're sure, going all not? in on Tyler Duncan this week. Yeah, that's that's the move. I mean, that you have a better shot. Luke Donald. You can cross that one off in Sharpie, but uh, that that's not Tyler Duncan, though. 
he's the type of guy once or twice a year, he pops yes. up out of nowhere and he's a winner at RSM. He's shown a little life lately. He's gained in six of seven on the approach. The game is not in great shape. That's why you're going to find him at the odds that you find him. But is could you see something like that with a guy like that? I think this is the type of course where we would see it. Low odds. That's a pretty interesting, like super Ooh. long shot. I can't do I it with thought, Luke Donald. Yeah. He's just, he's just, I honestly don't think his ceiling is there anymore. He may make a cut, uh, but I just, I can't see it. You have to be honest, though, with me and Jordan and, and everybody else out here. I don't, I don't know why this thing keeps falling out. Jordan isn't talking to me. I don't want people thinking like Jordan's talking to me. Throughout what are you getting those plays piece. rated O in? What, what's exactly, going on? exactly right. Luke Donald. Yeah. Like 50 to one. No. So is is your reasoning for Tyler Duncan because you're afraid of just scoffing at me once again, like Billy Ho last week? Or is there some actual foundation to it? So, no, no, I'll scoff at Luke Donald. If Luke Donald <laughs> wins, just cancel the show permanently. Tyler Duncan, there's two reasons. One, when he did win at RSM, I had a piece yeah. of that, uh, which was outrageous in itself. And two, that Tyler Duncan is the type of guy, he stays on tour with a couple big showings each year and a lot of missed cuts. And he doesn't do a lot, but when he does, he's shown that he can do it. He's got to win. He's got two top fives. He's got, you know, 10, 15 tournaments inside the top 20 over the last three or four years. It's not all the time. And that's why the odds reflect it. But Tyler Duncan can get in the mix at the right event. Do I think he's going to? Probably not. But I don't think you think that either. What you're saying is the odds yeah. make it intriguing enough that it's worth a small allocation because the upside is there. And I agree with that. Absolutely. All right. There's no surprise with mine. You already knocked them off the board here, and rightfully so. So we'll bypass my 40 20 10. As I told you earlier at CT Pan, I got them top 40 plus money, even money, technically. So that's something that does slide in here and meets the criteria of your top 40 guy has to be plus money, at the very least, even money. And then from there, obviously, top 20 and top 10. So CT Pan is off the board. Not only is Ben's long shot, but also my 40 20 10. That means it's all yours right now with whoever you want to convince us to the ladder up. I have a good one for you. Interesting name. And, and we've seen a, a string of this on tour. You get some guys, young guns from Europe. They come over and boom, they win. Lucas Herbert, Garrett Higo. And then they struggle. And no doubt, one of the names that belongs in there is Rasmus Hogard. 21 years old. He's wow. gotten some pedigree here. He was sixth at Corrales, 18th at Valero. We know the talent is there. He's plus 110 for a top 40. Rasmus is going to be a player. Is it going to be immediate? Obviously, there's going to be some growing pains. But he's got now some serious experience over here. He's been in tournaments. He's made some cuts. And to me, this guy is just going to continue to get better. He's a mega talent out of the European Tour. He won three times over there already. I think that Rasmus is going to be a perpetual buy, not for outrights per se, but to start to find the weekends consistently, to start to cash some checks. I think we can look to him, and I like that plus money on that top four day. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking around. You get him around plus 110. That's that's a great find. How old is he? Do you know? He's 21. Yeah, you're right. He's a player. He's early. going to be yep. here for a long time. It's a good chance to get him on that. All right, let's get a final card in on our way out. If you want to look after our final card, I know we're just throwing this on Jordan's plate so we don't want his head to explode. If you want, right after you give your last name on the final card, one name to keep an eye on for the U.S. Open if people want to get in early because we're so close to it. But... We have to remind people, new users on FanDuel, download the app. It's easy. Sign up on the app, and you're going to win some free money. It's so simple. Once you have that app and you sign up as a new customer, deposit $10, and then bet $5 on any wager. And if you win or lose that wager, you'll get $200 in free bets that you can put together a ticket, you can put together whatever you're following here from Ben or me, what have you, right away on FanDuel and put that money to use. So this is our no-brainer FanDuel option for you out there, right, Ben? Well said. It, it's truly a great opportunity, and I know people, you may put it off. When these inevitably go away, and they will, you're going to say, man, I'm going to end up signing up and I'm not going to get $200 now. Why did I wait? Like, you might as well just sign up and take the free money and then it's just there and, and you get some opportunities to make some bets. 
uh, because these won't be around forever. That is the actual truth. But looking at my card real quick, just to summarize it up top, I'm going to try to beat the big three. If I can, it'll try to be with Tony Finau and Fitzy. Then I'm going to throw CT Pan as my favorite long shot this week. Uh, we talked about Rasmus in that top 40, but for outright CT Pan is the guy I'm going to continue to try take my shots with. All right. So I'm going to end here with Sam Burns to win top 10. I'm going to tail you on HV3. I'm also going to play him top 20. I really like that spot yeah. for Varner. Duncan is a top 10 play. I, I think if you want to sprinkle like, uh, you know, a fifth, not even a fifth, but like what would 005 of a unit there, uh, <laughs> five bucks on Duncan to top five. That's fine there. And then my pan ladder, 40, 20, 10. One name quick on the way out that we should keep an eye on either for good or bad reasons that could benefit either from playing or not this week for the U.S. Open? Oh, I think that's pretty easy for me. It's Patrick Reed. He was someone that a lot of people were on at Memorial, including me, and he didn't really do much. I think that if he has a huge week here, he's going to be overwhelming a guy that people will look to for the U.S. Open. If he plays bad, I think you won't even hear his name uh, mentioned among the elite contenders at the U.S. Open. So Patrick Reed, I think, is a very interesting name to keep an eye on as we head into another major. Love that. And we'll be there next week. So make sure you're right back here for another edition of Putting for Dough at Jazz Raz DFS is how you follow Ben on Twitter. I'm at Shander Show. Jordan produced. Great job, sir. Thank you. And thank to you all out there as well. So hit that thumbs up button and subscribe on your way out. We'll see you next week.